from the hell that is Dunkirk. Back from the steel thrust of the German war machine comes the BEF. The evacuation of troops from the beaches at Dunkirk was rightly celebrated as a great moment in British history. This is the most magnificent sight of a generation. This is the army under its magnificent leaders. They have come back from a terrible and bitter battle, but still in their tired and half-closed eyes is mirrored the spirit and cause for which they fight. That has not gone. That can never be taken away from them. On the 4th of June, the day the last troops came home, Prime Minister Winston Churchill rallied the country with his most famous of speeches. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. What Churchill didn't say was that on that very same day, tens of thousands of British troops were still in France, fighting for their lives. Everybody seems to think Dunkirk was the end of it. They never mentioned the 51st Island Division. After the rest of the British Army had gone home, the 51st Highland Division were ordered to fight on against the might of Adolf Hitler's war machine. Everything was chaotic. It was hellish. Never dreamed that that would come out bad as it did. Now, almost 80 years later, the last survivors of that division tell their extraordinary story for the first time. And using recently declassified secret documents, the full details of their fight for survival can now be revealed. It's the story of a desperate battle in the face of overwhelming odds. The doomed rescue mission launched to save them. And when all seemed lost, their remarkable, courageous last stand. We saw the tanks coming. Then we knew we were in for a bit of a, a real paste in. This is the untold story of what happened after Dunkirk. I think of the forgotten men who never made it home. In January 1940, the 20,000 men of the 51st Highland Division had arrived in France. They were there as part of the British Expeditionary Force, or BEF. Half a million British soldiers sent across the Channel to help the French army defend against a possible German invasion. Well, we were going to serve our country. As young men at that age, you follow brag. Follow wind, if you like. Our feeling was that it'd be short. We'll show them when we get there, and that would have been the end of it. It said it'd be over by Christmas. <laughs> Didn't say which year, though. <laughs> In April, the 51st Division were separated from the rest of the BEF. They were put under the command of the French Army and sent to help defend the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line is, is one of the strongest defensive lines the world has ever known. I mean, it's absolutely formidable. It covers the entire French and German border. So uh, it's up 150 main forts. It is an incredible feat of engineering, and there is absolutely no way on earth any German army is going to break through it. The 51st was stationed by the Hackenberg Fortress, the largest in the whole line, and a showpiece of French fortification. 1,000 troops lived underground, manning 15 combat blocks and 18 artillery guns, 10 of which were mounted on retractable electric turrets 
capable of firing through 360 degrees. Such is the mighty frontier of modern France, a frontier written in steel and concrete. Blocks were connected by 10 kilometers of tunnels through which trains ran carrying supplies and ammunition. Power for the railway comes from the central power station. Here are electric dynamos. Power for the kitchen, storing enough food to keep a quarter of a million men below the surface for a whole year. There were six kitchens, a bar, a cinema, and a wine cellar. The presence of Highlanders and other British troops at the front has made it possible for many... Apart from a few border skirmishes, life on the Maginot Line was quiet. It was just flat on the front line for weeks and weeks and weeks and nothing happened. We could see the Germans walking along their line and the British was walking along their line and nobody bothered or even talking to one another. Troops from opposing sides even socialized together. Some Germans were coming through the wood armed with bottles. That's, 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 well, that's strange. And the French troops, I said, oh no, it's their turn to come over tonight. We were there last weekend. Now imagine me in the Maginot Line, sitting on a mine in the Maginot Line. Now it's turned out nice again, the army life is fine. At night myself to sleep I sing, to my old tin hat I cling. I have to use it now for everything. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it was a thrill being there, but never dreamed that that would come out bad as it did. On the 10th of May, Adolf Hitler ordered his forces to invade France, not attacking the Maginot Line but by driving straight through the Ardennes forest. The French leadership doesn't believe the Germans are going to pass through the Ardennes because they think that any German attack will be motorized and that the windy, narrow roads, hills, forests and river system that is the feature of the Ardennes forest would make any kind of mobile armor thrust completely impossible. Over a million German troops and thousands of panzer tanks charged through the forest almost totally unopposed. The marginal line didn't really count for nothing. The Germans just walked past it. German forces cut a devastating swathe right through the centre of France, overwhelming Allied defences with the speed and strength of their combined attack. With a massive German force also invading through Belgium, the bulk of British forces were quickly encircled. And of course, the British get caught in this massive pocket in northern France, which just diminishes and diminishes and diminishes until there is no alternative but to retreat the vast bulk of them, evacuate them from Dunkirk. 338,000 British and French troops were evacuated but not a single soldier of the 51st was amongst them. We didn't even know about Dunkirk. When the British army was evacuated, we were at the end. The German thrust through the Ardennes had cut off the 51st from the rest of the BEF. And there were no plans to evacuate them. Yes, British and French troops have been evacuated from Dunkirk, but there is a whole nother fight that is just about to start taking place south of, of the River Somme, you know, for the southern half of France. And the only complete British division which is in that half of France is the 51st Highland Division. So it is utterly unthinkable that they should be taken out at this point. There's still a battle to be fought. They've got to play their part. Churchill said, we fight on to the last, last man, the last bullet. He says, we are going to fight to the last ditch. This was Churchill's idea. No more evacuations. You fight on. <laughs> 